From a revised travel ban to questions about Russia's influence in the U.S. presidential election and the construction of a border wall, we'll discuss some of the issues facing the Trump administration. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. U.S. President Donald Trump signed a revised version of a controversial travel ban on Monday. It imposes a 90-day ban on new visas for citizens from six Muslim-majority countries and suspends the refugee program for 120 days. The White House dropped Iraq from the original list and announced Syrians are no longer subject to an indefinite ban from the United States. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson described the new measures as vital to strengthening U.S. security. To our allies and partners around the world, please understand this order is part of our ongoing efforts to eliminate vulnerabilities that radical Islamist terrorists can and will exploit for destructive ends. And the State Department will implement the provisions in this order that allow for the admissions of refugees when it is determined they do not pose a risk to the security or welfare of the United States. The travel ban was a signature issue during Trump's election campaign and his first days in office. Another priority is the construction of a border wall between the United States and Mexico to stop illegal immigration and drug trafficking. Our next guest is the mayor of Laredo, Texas, a city along the U.S.-Mexico border. Mayor Pete Science, welcome to Hi, the how show. Are you? Very nice to have you, sir. Now, your city is right on the border. It lies along the... Uh, Rio Grande River, that's the border with Mexico, uh, and it is along this border that Donald Trump wants to build the wall. Now, if that happens, when that happens, what kind of an impact is it going to have on your city? Well, it'll have a multiple impact. Uh, psychologically, uh, you know, frankly, uh, will we'll, uh, distort you know, the, uh, the arrangement that we have with, with our neighbors. Um, uh, Mexico, uh, of course, we, we you interact in all sorts of ways, culturally, uh, Economically as well, uh, mm -hmm. keep in mind that that uh, NAFTA is very much part of our economy. Uh, NAFTA, we call Laredo, Texas, and El Laredo basically NAFTA on wheels. If you want to see the the true impact of, of NAFTA, the positive impact of NAFTA, you know, come visit our city. Uh, uh, we do our port is the number one land port of the entire Americas, the entire continent. Uh, we, our port alone does over two hundred billion dollars worth of trade. Uh, yeah, because you are a transportation hub. Almost every big transportation company has a facility in Laredo. We are a transportation hub, a distribution, a warehousing, whatever is connected to, uh, to trade. Uh, we represent that. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is, again, so integral and, and connected to, you know, to Mexico. Yes, uh, the wall, we want border security. I think both uh, Mexico and the U.S. want border security. We appreciate the fact that pre President Trump raised that issue. Uh, because it needs to be uh, taken care of. Uh, but we disagree. He's our president, my president. I, I respect him. Uh, he was there, uh, and I know him personally. Uh, but we disagree as to the form, as to how border security should take place. Uh, uh, we're asking for a virtual wall, not a physical cement-type wall. Uh, and, and aside from that, the topography there in the Laredo area uh, doesn't lend itself. You know, we, we, it's a rolling topography. And when you say a virtual wall, what does that mean? I, do you want beefed up security? Uh, yes. Uh, accomplish security through a, through a virtual wall. We're yeah. saying uh, let's move away from a cement, concrete type wall. And uh, it's primarily three or four components. One is visibility. Right. You know, we have a, a, a reed type of, of vegetation. We call it carrizo cane. And, and we also have a shrub like tree. We call that salt cedar. They're dense. And the people that actually swim uh, can actually hide very well there. And uh, so we need lines of, of sight cleared uh, for the Border Patrol people to, you know, to access the river. And that takes me to the second factor, and that's uh, constructing infrastructure, roads next to the river, so uh, Border Patrol people can have quick access, right. see them, and then technology. Uh, uh, we have nowadays, uh, through uh, the uh, uh, high-tech uh, equipment that we have, uh, you know, we can you know, apply that as well through towers, aerostats, uh, and, and we have no problem with more Border Patrol people in, in, in our community. Uh, we work very closely with them. Uh, we, we support that measure as well, bringing in more Border Patrol personnel. 
and that's right. good for our economy, local economy. So we're, we're basically on the same page. Uh, and we're not totally against any type of fencing. Mm -hmm. it, it, the fencing is done strategically in, in certain uh, short lengths uh, and, and placed, uh, you know, say, by strategic areas, uh, parks and, and water plants and so on. Right, and presumably you are in Washington uh, to present those options to the people who matter over here. Well, we have, and it's not necessarily me. The entire border there of, of Texas, uh, yeah. Uh, we've had uh, a, a sequence of meetings, of summits, and we're speaking in a unified voice, basically saying no physical wall, a, a virtual, wall is what, virtual wall is what we need. And, and we are now bringing that message uh, to our uh, Congress people, our senators. Matter of fact, I just met uh, uh, our two state senators from Texas, uh, uh, Cruz and, and Cornyn. And uh, so they basically know the message, and uh, Senator Cornyn in particular is very much uh, uh, adhering to that message, uh, you know, he also opposes a, a physical wall, and he's very much in favor of this virtual wall. I think Senator Cruz is, is, is coming to that realization as well, uh, uh, but, but the message is being... Uh, Did you get the sense that uh, they're moving away from the idea of a wall? Uh, uh, th that is the expectation that we have, yeah. and I think we will probably get there once the dust settles. Uh, uh, but some communities may, may want some sort of a levy. I know the valley area further east of the Laredo area, uh, uh, they, they want levees because of the terrain there is very flat and they want to contain flood waters, flood you know, waters right. in the river. So um, they're asking for levees and maybe a fence on top of the, those concrete levees or, or uh, earthen uh, levees. Uh, what is sentiment like in your city among the people of Laredo? Because we looked at one survey, that was a survey conducted by the Quinnipiac University, and it showed that six in 10 Americans do not approve of a wall being constructed on the southern border. But what is it right down there in the, in the, in the city? Uh, there, and I can, I can assure you, uh, you know, the vast majority of, of our people don't want a, a physical wall. Uh, and, and it doesn't surprise me that the survey that you conducted, uh, uh, and I'm glad to hear that too, because I think that's, it just seems, you know, very much un-American, frankly. Uh, uh, you know, we can do or accomplish what, what our president wants without the um, physicality of a, of a structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll end up at that conclusion, you know, sometime soon. And, and, as, and, and what the feeling is really is uncertainty. Uh, we want uh, businesses basically maybe holding back as well. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and we don't want uh, uncertainty in the markets, uh, especially in the border area. Uh, because we we uh, we mean so much in value to to the entire United States as well. Uh, you know, the U.S. Mexico trade creates over six million uh, jobs uh, for the U.S. Uh, and that's been documented in, in, uh, through uh, you know, studies. So, on a daily basis, how much traffic would you see going through Laredo across the border to Mexico? <laughs> well, Laredo uh, currently we have over fourteen thousand trucks daily. That's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. This is napped on wheels, and that's why I, I describe it in, in such a fashion. So we, we have about 7,000 trucks going south and 7,000 uh, huge trucks going north. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of movement, uh, uh, and it all comes with the overall port. It, if, you, if you take maritime, you know, seaports, yeah. air, and land, we're behind Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles is the number one overall port in the entire U.S. We're the number two port. And then uh, New York uh, follows us as, as the number three overall port. So right. uh, that, that just shows a magnitude of, of the volume of trade we do through our location. We've been blessed of being geographically uh, located uh, as an ideal route from Mexico and, of course, U.S. In, you know, into Mexico and South America. Seems to be a great deal of emotion surrounding this particular issue of immigration. Um, emotion and also we still hear the kind of rhetoric that we heard during the election campaign. You know, President Trump called uh, Mexican undocumented workers rapists and criminals, yet we have figures that show us that that is not true, that it's, it's more likely that people who are born in America would commit crimes rather than immigrants who come here. Has the president got it wrong there? And to what extent does that influence opinions down there? Well, obviously, it, it's disturbing, uh, yeah. frankly. Uh, coming from a community where we live it and, and experience it, uh, you know, breathe, we breathe the community of the border every day, uh, you know, just our own community, I don't have any fixed numbers, uh, but easily, we, you know, we have 30 to 40,000 undocumented people that live in our community. They've assimilated very well. We depend on each other. Uh, 
And for the vast majority of the people there, uh, they're good, decent, hardworking people wanting to make a living, uh, uh, and 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 they're accepted. At least we we've accepted them. Uh, yes, they do tax our school system somewhat and, and our health mm -hmm. system, but but we've accommodated. Uh, but this is why one credit I do give the president uh, Trump, our president Trump, uh, is the fact that he, he's raised the issues to a level that 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 have to be discussed and 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 dealt with. Uh, especially uh, right. yeah, immigration reform. Yeah. Very quickly, we've got about 20 seconds left. If the wall is built, how badly is it going to hurt your economy? Oh, if, if a wall is built, and, and, and obviously I'll touch on NAFTA as well, I yeah. mean, it'll be a disastrous. Uh, you know, obviously the, the wall can be built and the bridges can continue. You know, we, we see ourselves as, as not uh, building walls, but building bridges and, and, and more connectivity. Uh, uh, but it would have a very, very negative impact, uh, you know, on, on the relationship that we have with Mexico and the U.S., uh, especially in the border area. Mayor Pete Sons, thank you very much for joining well, us. Well, thank sir. you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. We are going to take a break right now. Next, from immigration policies to wiretapping claims, we'll discuss President Trump's early days in office. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.